Assalamu alaikum, my name is Yusuf, a professional chef, and these days I spend my time teaching people how to cook online. Made Halal is a series brought to Freshly Grounded where we take foods from around the world that might not necessarily be halal and we give them to you made halal. Now today's dish is interesting because technically it already is halal. The issue is that it's all the way over in America. Yes, we're talking about the In-N-Out Burger Animal Fries. Now I'd love to try those fries. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit far from America. So what we're gonna do is switch over to our friend in LA who's going to try it for us. He's not necessarily gonna review it. But what we are gonna see is some beautiful slow-mo shots that are gonna make our mouths water and kind of see what we're up against. Assalamu alaikum. So yeah, we're here in LA. We're about to go to In-N-Out. I know you guys don't have In-N-Out in, the UK, so we're gonna go to the Hollywood location of In and Out. The one on Sunset is one of the busiest ones, so we're gonna go now. They're closed inside due to the coronavirus, so we're just gonna go through the drive through. We're gonna get the animal style fries and then we're gonna taste them, show you guys how they look right when you get them out of the restaurant, and then we're gonna have Yusuf go ahead and um, replicate them in the kitchen, inshallah. Um, so yeah, we're about to go right now, let's go. Wow, that was looking pretty good. So looking at a few recipes online, what we can kind of see is that we have the base of chips. It's topped with American cheese, caramelized onions, and a sort of special sauce that they have. I'm gonna sort of take every level of this and go into a little bit more detail, see how we can make it a bit more chefy, a bit more interesting. And hopefully by the end of it, we have something that can go up against it. Okay, so first things first, let's start with our chips, or should I say fries? So in order to make our fries, we're going to start off with some red potatoes. Now, red potatoes are great because they are a mixture between being waxy and floury. They're a nice balance. If you try to make fries out of floury potatoes, they might be a little bit too dry in the middle. And waxy potatoes might not necessarily have that starch content that you're looking for to give that nice crispy exterior. So what I'm going to do is take a bunch of my red potatoes and just give them a really good peel all the way over, just checking to make sure that there's no sort of like blemishes or any kind of brown spots. And we're going to cut these up into fry type shapes. By that, it totally depends on the shape of your potatoes. What I've done is half them, cut them lengthways, and then cut them into sort of thin matchstick type pieces. Doesn't matter if it's perfect, so long as they're in general sort of fry type shapes you're right. Then what I'm going to do is put them in a pan of cold water. What we're going to do here is double cook them. The benefit of double cooking them is that we have a really nice fluffy interior and a really crispy exterior. Whereas if we just chuck these straight into a fryer, it will take some time for the whole chip to cook, by which you might not necessarily have the best of both where the outside is nice and crisp and the inside is nice and fluffy. So by cooking them beforehand, you're going to have really perfect chips. It's a small detail, but it will help you a lot. We're going to add this into some cold water. And the reason why we have it cold is so that the inside cooks nice and evenly rather than just the outside cooking. And we're going to bring this up to a boil and just keep an eye on it. What I'm looking for is not that they're cooked all the way through, but that they become nice and soft just so that they have a little bit of give. You can sort of break them by putting a little bit of pressure on them. This will be about five minutes of boiling. So now what I'll do is I'll drain this entirely, making sure it's completely dry on some paper towels, kind of spreading them out nice and evenly. And also by drying it, you're going to allow the sort of exterior skin to form, which is going to really help that crispy shell on your fries. While that's chilling out on the side, I'm going to start on my caramelized onions. We've got three brown onions. What I'm going to do is take the top off, half it, remove the skin, and we're going to make some cuts going down. Now you can see by the way I'm cutting it, I'm not doing a fine dice. We don't want fine pieces. You want to have that nice texture from the onion. And so I'm kind of separating my slices just a little bit. We're gonna cut it down all the way to the root and make one cut along the middle. Chopping it roughly, making sure you get all the way to the root so that there's no waste whatsoever. Once you've chopped everything, we're gonna go in a pan with a good knob of butter and a few tablespoons of vegetable oil. Adding in your onions to this on a medium low heat and you're gonna cook this off. This is gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes. You can speed this up if you want, but if you want really good caramelized onions, what you need to do is cook this nice and gently. Now, as you can see, just before I've started frying these, I've added a good pinch of salt to this. Yes, this seasons it, but it does something a bit more science-y, if you will. 
By adding salt to the onions right at the beginning, you're drawing out the moisture from it. That stops you from having to add sort of extra water and stuff like that inside it. It will release its own natural juices and give you that really nice caramelized flavor. So we're gonna fry this on a really low heat. It's gonna start to slowly turn golden. And as the onions have fully cooked and they're nice and brown, you're gonna increase the heat slightly to get those nice crispy sort of caramelized edges. And once you're completely satisfied with the color, you're gonna remove them onto a plate. Now what I've done is I've given the wok a light wipe before I've filled it up with some vegetable oil. And I'm gonna increase this to a medium, medium high heat. What I'm gonna do is take our dried fries and add them in bit by bit. I'm gonna fry them until they're beautiful, crisp and golden. And I'm gonna drain them and put them into a sort of pot that's been lined with a tissue, you can use a bowl as well. Giving them a light season with some salt. Now to make the sauce, you can actually do this while your chips are frying because they'll take a few minutes. All I'm simply gonna do is take one gherkin or pickle and slice that up, chopping it into nice fine pieces before mixing it in with some mayonnaise, sriracha sauce, ketchup, and some honey. This is gonna create a really nice balanced sauce that has a sort of pickly, sweet, and spicy flavor, which is gonna be really delicious. So once I've mixed that together, the onions are done to one side, the chips have been frying, and we have our cheese. I'm actually using a spiced cheddar, not the sort of typical American cheese, which is used in the traditional recipe just because I think it'll make it taste a lot nicer. We're gonna plate this whole thing up. So what I've done is I've layered off the chips really nicely as the base, topping it off with that cheese and topping that off with the fried onions and then drizzling a nice big dollop of that sauce on the top. And there we have our In-N-Out animal style fries. But the question is, how does it taste? Yeah, okay. Oh, let me try and eat this in the most dignified way. Get some of the top, just from there. Mm. This might be one of my favorite recipes that we've done. It's so good. Like the chips, even though we put that extra effort in, you can really taste the difference from using like frozen fries, for example. It just re it's really good. It's nice and fluffy on the inside, crispy on the outside. The caramelized onions are sweet. You got that nice spicy cheddar. And we got that beautiful sauce on top. It works together so well. I love it. One of my favorite ones that we've done so far, alhamdulillah.